all right, you guys. This time we really shouldn't wait too long. Chrysalis and Sunset Shimmer are still out there. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, Twilight. I wasn't ready for you to instantly start this episode with an actual topic. Yeah, I was already in the middle of tuning out for like a minute till the intro skit was done. You can't go chasing up the well-established formula like that without warning us. Now, what were you saying? Well, sorry if I caught you off guard, but I just wanted to distance our sketches from that stale gut and build up. Which, as we can see, is working out greatly. Just look at how deep we're already into your topic by now. That's true. If I were you, or a bodice for that matter, I wouldn't waste too much time trying to change it up all that much. In the end, everyone only has one style of doing things. Either that, or a bodice is once again just in hard cope mode. Whichever it is, how about we at least try to all not while I swish? You were saying something about Sunset Shimmer, weren't you? Oh, don't tell me you were actually listening to her. Grins. Zip it. No, but it's true, Pinky. After we got to the bottom of who was absorbing Equestria's magic and put a stop to that, we need to end to our next unfinished business. That being Chrysalis and Sunset Shimmer still on the loose. And what are we gonna do about them? Well, um, truth be told, I was hoping one of you might have an idea. You're kidding, right? Why would you even bring this topic up if you didn't already know what to do with it? Man, way to waste runtime once again. I'm not hearing any of you coming up with bright ideas. Um, I don't know. Couldn't we maybe just wait for them to show up again? Judging by how things went down for them last time, I guess they'll be eager to get back at us. Perhaps, Pinky, but I don't think so. Why not? Simply put, plot diversity. We've confronted them just in the second to last episode. It would be way too early for them to show up again. Plot diversity, huh? Sounds to me like the most welcome excuse. I mean, what's keeping us from doing anything on our own accord? Hmm, gee willikas, I wonder. Could it be our inability to function as a group unless the future of Equestria depends on it? Or simply our total lack of motivation to deal with any of that plot bullshit and lits is necessary? Be real, would any of you here be asked to actually go out and look for traces to find those two? Me yeah, in like that. No, no, I got better no. things to do. Okay, never mind then. There. Case in fucking point. At least in that regard, I can always rely on you. Na wunderbar. So I guess we'll just go back to idling around until the next thing decides to happen. But you know what? That's fine to me. Gives me time to look deeper into the mystery I'm currently faced with. A for effort for that attempted subtlety, Rare. Then tell us, what's that mystery about? And do mindst. Now, as you all may or may not remember, I used to be able to magically know about basically everything that's happening in Equestria. But ever since around the time the Omnus plot started, that has suddenly stopped. My candidate context just didn't send me any more messages with important info. Oh, so there wasn't just a throwaway callback last episode? This is actually what's gonna be our topic now? Man, and here I was hoping it would be something worth getting up for in the morning. Oh, please, you're acting as if it's unusual for shows to focus on one character's problems from time to time. Sure you don't give a shit, neither would I if it wasn't about me, but that's what's being part of this show demands. At least pretend that you give one single fuck, can you do that for me? Honestly, no. But I can't be bothered to be viewed as the asshole of the situation yet again, so I'm at least gonna try to pretend. Don't expect too much, though. That's about as good as you're gonna get. With any of us, to be honest. I don't know, I actually am also kinda curious. Nevertheless, we all sit through it together. Dealing with shit that you normally wouldn't give a damn about is what friendship is about, after all. You know, is it just me or is this episode in particular just heavily drenched in cynicism? Hey, I don't know, there's any real difference. It doesn't matter, honestly. What does matter, however, is the fact that I already took the time to take the first few steps in this side plot off screen. Because I took the liberty of traveling on to Candlelot after we returned from Philadelphia. I decided I was gonna check up on my contacts in person to see if they would tell me what has been keeping them. Well, on a surface level, that sounds like a good idea. Where's the thing that went wrong with it? How do you know it went wrong? Didn't it? We both know Robotus wouldn't just make it that easy. <sighs> Unfortunately, you are of course correct. I did find my informants, but they didn't want to tell me anything. All I was told was that they had nothing to say to me anymore. And then they just started treating me like air. Which in itself isn't unusual, to be fair. That's just how the Canola Delete acts towards no ponies. But they acted like I was one. What an outrage. Huh, I see. So they somehow decided that you're no longer part of their elite. Where exactly is the problem now? It's in the outrageous way I was treated by them. Not a single word of explanation, no reason given, no further interactions at all. As elitist as the Candlelight High Society is, it's always treating its members with respect. 
If I really summer was exiled from that status, I would have been told right away. There would have been a meeting of all members and an official club hearing, followed by a vote. At the very least, one single message about it is to be expected. Yes, we do blow this whole candlelit elite thing pretty far out of proportion. Wait, hold on, did you say a message from a candlelit club? Yes. Why? Um, look, Rarity, I would ask you to please remain calm and let me explain myself first. But it appears I might have an answer to that mystery. You would? How? What do you know? And where did you get it from? From Canterlot. To be frank, I can't remember when excited I was, but one of the times I went to Canterlot, I think I picked something up for you. A letter from some fancy-looking mare, sealed with a weird triple C insignia. Okay, now just to recap this. I'm here worrying my ass off and trotting in the dark trying to find out why what's happening is happening. And now you confess to me that you had a letter for me, most likely from this very club? All this fucking time? I feel like I just witnessed the reveal of Diablo Immortal. Is this an out of season April Fool's joke? Yeah, honestly, normally I would be trying to side against Rody just to be a bitch, but in this case, you really don't fucked up, Twy. How do you get a letter for some pony else and then just forget about it for God knows how many months? Seriously, what took you so long? Hmm, I don't know. Maybe it was all the other shit happening in Equestria. Was it Spike selling drugs and trying to murder ponies? Was it Celestia and her attacks? Or was it Ominous orchestrating that whole disaster? You know what? You're right. How could I possibly forget something so important as a letter that wasn't even addressed at me in the midst of all that? Sigh still. Just get me the damn letter now. All right. There. Okay, are you gonna read yourself out loud or not? Dear Miss oh, Red. Yeah. Man, I didn't expect it to. That was almost a jump scare. All right, back to it. As you very well know, the Cadillac Country Club for Cadillac Ponies is a very exquisite organization. We hold to our members the same standards that we hold to ourselves. An impeccable conduct, therefore, is mandatory. As well as, of course, a sufficiently large bank account. For years, you have upheld all these conditions immaculately. However, to my personal regret, I have been made aware of the source of most of your wealth. Originally, it was assumed that because of your role in Friendship is Magic, you were rich enough to afford membership in this club. I was very much disillusioned when I was pointed to a peculiar account on a very much ignoble website. A disreputable, a disreputable site, site, I might say. Such, Such a connection to one of our esteemed members. members. It reflects, how, how shall we say, poorly on the club. club. It, is it is therefore my sorrowful duty, duty to inform you that the Candlelight Country Club for Candlelight Ponies is hereby officially revoking your membership. All privileges and rights of knowing the news equestrian gossip are hereby stripped from you. It is always a sad day when our club loses one of its own. But the rules exist for a reason. Our club is an example of sublimity and majesty to the ordinary ponies of this land. A beacon of glamour to guide those lost in the mud of normality. Now this beacon will have to shine without you. My most honest and heartfelt condolences. Yours most sincerely, Fancy Pants. Um, sheesh. That was pretty rough, not gonna lie. Yeah, I mean, I only got like a third of it, but the gist of it came across. Are you alright, Rarity? <sighs> <sighs> How very outrageous. Are, are they serious with this? They can't just throw me out of their club. So I know unfair shame tight. Uh, at the hazard of sounding like I wasn't paying attention, but what even does this letter mean? What club are they talking about? Why, the Candlelight Country Club for Candlelight Ponies. A triple C in short. And what the hell are they? Well, to put it simple, they are a club of the latest ponies in Candlelight, the richest of the rich. Plus, they are the ones who know everything about everything. This club, or rather its member specifically assigned to gathering gossip and info, is where I used to get all my knowledge about everything that was going on from. Ah, so that explains why you suddenly stopped already knowing about stuff some time back. Wait, you're gonna have to get a little more detailed about that club. Since when was y'all in there? Remember that season 2 episode about me meeting Fancy Pants and becoming part of the Candlelight Elite? 
Well, it happened that he took a liking in me and invited me to join his club after the episode was finished. I've been a part of it ever since, for almost ten years. Did I never mention that? Uh, no, you didn't. All you ever said was something about informants, which could have been any pony. And you telling me you were part of this club all this time, even when our show was still running? Well, actually, it's one of those things that got established retrospectively, but everyone is forced to pretend like that's how it's always been from the very start, and it was always intended like that. Oh, you mean like Harley Quinn being a lesbian? A little homophobic of an example, but yeah, basically. Cool. And what does this mean now for the rest of us? Basically nothing, I would think. For me, however, it means I have to go about fixing this misunderstanding. Misunderstanding? I mean, they didn't spell it out, but I'm pretty sure they were referring to your OnlyFans account, which you can't deny is your biggest source of income. Hardly. You girls seem to underestimate just how ridiculously rich I truly am. Or do you seriously think those slave folds in Nigeria are only mining crystals for building my statue? They need tools and proper materials for that job. And they finance it by mining diamonds, of course. The all of low revenue from selling those is transferred directly to me. Oh, come on, please don't look at me like that. You've all known about the slaves for a long time. Getting upset about it now would just be hypocritical. Nah, nah, those fucking slaves can work themselves to death for all I care. But what I'm fucking living about is thinking back to when I was in debt with money, man, and I asked you for help. You seriously called them 700 bits an insolent sum, when judging by what you just said, you just Scrooge McDuck women in bits. I had to look out for my own interests, and I simply couldn't trust you paying the money back. Which would have been such a big loss for you, huh? Honestly, does it even still have any meaning that we're supposed to be friends? I wonder that every single day of my life. Okay, so this topic seems to be going in one direction only. How about we come back to that club? What would they say if you were to get rid of your OnlyFans? Get rid of my OnlyFans? You know, actually, I could really consider that. Wait, seriously? Just like that? Sure. I mean, it is a valuable source of income, but it also hasn't been as profitable ever since Spike stopped being a simp for me. It's impressive, really, that so much of my OnlyFans revenue was made up of only his contributions. In the grand scheme of things, I hardly will even notice it once it's gone. Because as of now, in a way, it already is. And you think that'll be enough? You just quit your OnlyFans and those elitist high-class ponies will welcome you back into the club? Why, of course not, my dear naive Twilight. I will have to bribe all important members responsible for making that decision. But don't worry about it, I know what to do. I'll begin by writing a letter to the chair pony of the member committee, in which I demand a meeting with Fancy Pants to explain my position. Alrighty, sounds like y'all got it all figured out. And while you're off doing that there thing with the club, the rest of us will just go back to plain existing, waiting for something actually exciting to happen. Well, I'm doubtful about the exciting part, but something is bound to happen. Sooner or later. Preferably later.